producing any milk. And oh, yeah. The guy, yeah. The guy was like, what are you doing? And I was like, this is what I do every Thursday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hi. Hi, guys. How about that cigar? How about that cigar? Welcome to episode... 100 holy shit episode 100 of how about that cigar live guys we are so grateful to you that we Thank get you. to we get to talk about cigars and weird stuff with you guys we're so grateful to for you watching the show for listening to us on the audio podcast 100 episodes is 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 just a, a great honor and we're excited to you know be a part of this great cigar community that we uh that we're a part of and uh, thank you so much for joining us on this journey. And uh, as always, we come to you live from the Drew Estate Cigar Studios. And let's talk about the new packaging for the Undercrown lines. The new 25-count design is more compact and shelf-friendly, enabling premium cigar retailers more shelf space inside their humidors. These new boxes will roll out for all Undercrown lines, including Undercrown Shade, Undercrown Sungrown, and the original Undercrown Maduro. Finally, and most importantly, all these classic Undercrown blends will remain unchanged. A decade ago... The staff at the Drew Estate Factory realized they had to reduce their consumption of Liga Pravada No. 9 cigars in order to keep up with consumer demand. These hardworking men and women in Esteli then created their own signature cigar to enjoy. Constructed with many of the same rare tobaccos found in Liga Pravada, the Grassroots Undercrown Cigar brand debuted following followed by Undercrown Shade and then the Undercrown Sungrown. The new boxes for Undercrown Shade and Maduro are shipping now with the Undercrown Sungrown soon to follow. For more info, please visit DrewEstate.com. Mm. Episode 100. I can't even wrap my brain around it, people. I'm telling you, we're grateful to you guys for listening and yeah. watching. Um, and so just a couple things that we talk about, you know, normally. The, so last week we talked about our Minnesota wild hockey team and about how horrible they are. Cause they were third from the bottom in their division. And all of a sudden they win six straight. And now we're number two. I say, we just keep shitting on them. And yeah. <laughs> and that will, for the best. yes. And they will hear our cries yep. and yeah, it's, but now we get to play the number one team, the, uh, the Las Vegas golden Knights. Yeah, and they're really good. They and, are good. You but know what we did to the Kings was yeah, it just impressive. Yeah, uh, so they're playing good hockey right now. Yeah, and if you like baseball, spring Ooh. training is well. Spring training is well underway. The twins won their first, and I might, I might be able to because uh, tomorrow my family and I were flying to the Fort Myers area, and I might be able to swing up because it's nearby there where Twins have spring training. So, I may might be able to swing up and uh, catch a spring training game while we're in town. That'd be fun. So that might be uh, might be something on my calendar. I really don't have a calendar for this trip. It's just like let's just go and and relax and it. explore. There's Do that. no none of the theme parks, none of that nonsense. Just go look at things that that are interesting and just just find some new inspiration. Um. So, guys, this as I said before, and I'm I'm honestly kind of a little bit tongue tied about it just because I, I really am. And Garrett echoes. This is the fact that we just a couple lumpkins, you know, get to come on to Facebook and YouTube and talk to you. Great people about cigars. And, and we get to hear stories from so many great cigar people about uh, these cigars that we love so much. And, and this sort of cigar culture that brings us all together. And, and uh, for us to be able to do this, honestly, and, and the fact that people, pay enough attention to it where we said, yeah, we're going to keep doing this. And now that we're at a hundred, it's, it's really kind of mind boggling. It is, but I would like to go on the record saying I've never said lumpkins. You've never said lumpkins mm -hmm. until, well, just now. until just now. So now you've said lumpkins yeah. twice. Uh, no, Sorry. once. Just once. Say it again. L lumpkins. Oh, there you go. Twice. So now we're twice. up to two times yeah. and you just have to keep building on that. Make it a part of your regular vocabulary. Okay. All right. All right. I'll I appreciate that. that. All right, so we are going to bring on our special guest of the evening. And guys, as always, you know that special guests on the show are brought to you by Corona Cigar Company and CoronaCigar.com, the Internet's largest and easiest to use virtual cigar store. Corona Cigar Company offers you the finest handmade cigars, humidors, and cigar accessories at the absolute lowest possible price. You'll also find unique and limited cigars containing Florida sun-grown tobacco. As a proud American... 
president and founder of Corona Cigar Company, Jeff Borshowitz, believed it was possible to bring cigar tobacco farming back to Florida. At Corona Cigar Company and coronacigar.com, you'll find the best selection anywhere in the world of cigars containing this special Florida sun-grown tobacco. If you live in Florida or are just visiting, be sure to visit any of the great Corona Cigar locations in downtown Orlando, Sand Lake, Lake Mary, and also the Davidoff of Geneva Lounge in Tampa. For more info, please visit coronacigar.com and floridasungrown.com. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like you to please put your hands together, cheer as loud as you possibly can for our special guest of the evening for episode 100, Mr. Matt Booth. Welcome to the show. Matt. Did we not think that this possibly should have also been episode 101 we did how about did. that numbering convention yes <laughs> <laughs> so is this like split 100 101 are we gonna add extra minutes at the end to then be uh, 101 i am not against that proposition i'm not either by any stretch i'm also not against having you back in a couple weeks yeah we could do the follow-up <laughs> <laughs> where we apologize for all the shit we said tonight. There we go. That's true. A bunch of retractions. Yes, the and... retraction episode. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> but but uh, I, I don't know. I, I have a feeling I won't want to retract anything that happens on this show tonight. I have a feeling no, I'm no. going to roll with it and yeah. say it is what it is. Take it or leave it. And and let the, uh, let the chips fall where they may. It's true. I, I happen to agree. I concur wholeheartedly. So, Matt, you're coming again. You us. never know. Uh, what's up? No, no, no. I was just saying uh, you're coming to us from uh, Spokane. That and are you going to be partaking uh, in a cigar or beverage with us this evening? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Am I getting too personal? I Maybe. I thought, I thought we were going to snuggle later, but that was maybe just me. Well, obviously, that's fine. Okay. All right. That goes without we, saying. I take we'll have uh, virtual compensation for my time and deeds of the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> and you have uh, me what? on for, oh, I don't know, a certain six hours top. Six hours top. <laughs> I mean, that's a weekend in Tahoe, at least. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's true. So, um, like like we said before we went on Do the tell. air, and there was there there was some gold conversation honestly before we went on the air. Oh that my we, god! We should have just hit the live button as soon as you came on the on the broadcast studio because Game it was over. it was gold. It was gold. It, it was really, it was it was what your show should have been. It's what your show could have been. <laughs> it could still be. We it could. Well, I think we need to. I I think we. How about that throwback? How about that throwback? I think we could do, I think we can do better. No doubt. <laughs> so I have to, uh, we, we have to ask some, and I say that with that tone, we have to ask some cigar questions because it is after all, how about that cigar? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Just, just give us, give us the, the, give us the story of how you, what got you into the cigar game? What made you enjoy and and and, okay. and love premium cigars? Well, those are two very different questions. Well, yeah. So so let's start with the what made what when did you begin enjoying premium hand rolled cigars? I began enjoying premium hand rolled cigars. Uh, let me take you to another time and another place. Mm -hmm. With the one, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. With an uncle, Leroy, my uncle, uh, who we actually named a cigar after once upon a time. And uh, I smoked my first cigar with him when I was about 16. And it was so much not to do with the cigar and so much everything to do with sharing a moment or that moment rather with the undisputed king of coolness in our family. And, and by the way, the only person that smokes cigars. 
So it was a moment that no one else could really share with him either, right? Like on the level. Yeah. And and that was really how I first came to to love uh, cigar smoking, and it had, and it was so much to do with um, what I what I believe uh, that I've come to find uh, a little further down the road from that experience, but definitely a spiritual uh, element to smoking, and and such tremendous connectivity that, that experience can provide between two discerning adults. Yeah. And what people uh, of so age? That, so people of age, which mine increases by the day. I don't know about you. Do you get older? I don't. Uh, I know some people who don't. I do get older. Oh no, I very much get older. Uh, you know, like uh, <laughs> like Pharrell, uh, Wesley Snipes. Um, you know, there are a couple people that obviously are uh, time vampires. Uh, you know. mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure Tom that we Cruise. know some of them. You know, uh, we've seen Tom them. Cruise all the Three. time. Obviously, Tom Brady, Tom Obviously. Cruise, Denzel, yeah, Tom Denzel Berger Washington. didn't get that vampire deal. No, you know? he didn't. Oh, he did not. Nothing good for yeah, him. Yeah, swinging a miss. Now, but check it out, Tom Selleck though, that cat is is pushing what he's got to be in his seventies, bro. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And he's yeah. only now beginning to show any sign of patina. Right. <clears throat> patina, I like that. I bet that yeah. mustache gets a lot of wear. That mustache gives and has given and will continue to give many a ride mm -hmm. to if many that... uh, a young <laughs> lady that is stranded <laughs> out in Pleasurelandia <laughs> and if needs a ride. Oh, my God. The story is desperately tell. needs a ride to Pound Town. He'll be <laughs> Magnum will be there. Magnum yes. will mustache in his red Ferrari in the Fer in the helicopter. And speaking of Pound Town, I've hey. actually started incorporating that into some of our promotional jargon as mm. as a descriptor applied to what we're going to do to your palate. Oh, yes. We're going to take your palate down to Pound Town. You mm. know what I'm saying? Oh, I, it's kind of nice. It's provocative. And I like to be a provocateur. Yeah, as you may know, or I like my manhole to be that? pounded. Manhole. How I like my manhole to be pounded. Your 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 mouth hole. My mouth hole. My manhole. <laughs> Sometimes it's my mangina. You know. You know, old Greg had mangina. Rumor has it, and well, you, you the old Greg reference. We don't know old Greg. No, you got to look know. up old Greg. You got to look okay. up old Greg. Do yourself a solid. Okay. Because he for sure had one of those okay. aforementioned units. Yeah. Um, uh, so we're talking about, oh, yeah. So uh, th this, this was the pin being pulled from the psychological grenade in connection with the act of cigar smoking. And this would metastasize over time to become more interesting, more developed, you know, as, as, a, as a pastime, as an activity. Um, but I mean, all of that paled in comparison uh, to the volume and the style that I would begin to smoke when I got into the game, because yeah. now you're smoking for a completely different purpose. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I was smoking like a fucking maniac, uh, but I was in the process of, of trying to catch my palate up to speed. Uh, because I was working alongside people that had been developing their palace since, you know, professionally since they were teenagers. Do you remember some of your early favorites? In terms of cigars that I smoked, like branded product or things that yeah. we came up with or, or. No. Yeah. Some of the branded product that you were, um, that you enjoyed you as a enjoyed consumer early on. You know, uh, I have always been a fan of Padron. Don't Amen. give a fuck. Start at the top. Fuck it. The finest yeah. cigar on earth is the Padron 64 anniversary print space size natural wrapper. That is. I think I. I'll put that. I'll put that in my. I'll it's put that on, on my Mount Rushmore. It would be on. On Mount Cigar Rushmore. Yeah. And then, you know, I drop that and people are like, oh, the 80th. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, you looked rich. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now you've confirmed it. I was at I was at uh, one of Delicious's, uh, you know, galas. One of his affairs, you know, working very diligently to please my dear friend at my little table there. And a gentleman came up to the table. I, I could tell, you know, wealth tan, the whole deal. You know, um, probably got off the golf course to come to that event. And you know, I said, hey, so you know, uh, normally I don't speak to anyone like normally. Well, it's normal for me, but not normal, you know. But for him, I, you know, dialed it back and I said, sir, you know, what do you normally like to, to smoke? And he said, well, you know, I, I smoked a, a Patron 80th uh, this morning. Um, do you have anything comparable? And I said, first, I would like to apologize uh, in advance for everything on this table. Uh, this will be substandard uh, to your liking. And he said, hey, he said, I appreciate the spirit. And he bought it. He actually bought a box for me. I still feel that he just bought it and then probably gave it to someone. He, said, <laughs> yeah, I, he knew he was a Padron guy, too. He was so I'll just let's just give this to we'll give this to somebody. Yeah. yeah. I'll go to, you know, I'll go to. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. It's Pollo Tropical in Florida. You ever had Pollo Tropical? No. It's a beautiful chicken joint. And and I was imagining, I was envisioning him stopping at a Pollo Tropical on the drive through. Not not that a gentleman of his uh fervor would uh dine at such a place, but I imagine in this moment that he was and he actually gave them he was like, Hey, a nice guy gave me these and he gave them and took his chicken <laughs> fucking passed out. <laughs> Do they I, I do know. they accept cigars for payment for in the drive-thru? Oh no, I'm. He also gave the money. I'm just saying he probably was, was like dismissive of. <laughs> Here, do you want these? It's like yeah. jettisoned the product. He was like, I did a good thing today, young young guy, working hard. Give him a little, mm -hmm. you know, give him enough to wet his beak tonight. Stay at the yep. courtyard, Marriott. The yes, the courtyard. I, if, well, if he, he only knew. He's 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 probably uh, yeah he's probably more of a Ritz Carlton kind of a kind of a guy. Oh no, that gentleman with that tan. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah, <laughs> man. I'm talking about me. The fucking oh yeah. Guy. Like yeah, he was yeah. feeling like he had done, he had helped out. You know the the you know the working guy there. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're days in solid. people. We're days in people. I don't know about you. I'm, no shit. I'm, yeah. I gotta stay where there's points, bro. Because I oh can't, yeah that, I can't. Yeah. Days in has days. points. Yeah, they're part of the Wyndham uh, oh, system. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Every, how about that hotel? How about that hotel? <laughs> how about right. that hotel? Chain? So, Matt, you're you're developing your palate, um, and can you take us through what that looks like for you? How you developed your palate? I thought there weren't going to be so many cigar questions. How about that treachery? Just a few. We'll get over this hump and then and then it'll go off the rails and we'll have fun. Okay. Don't touch me in the morning and walk away. All right. No, it's gonna come around. You'll get it. Reach around. It's gonna mm -hmm. reach around. Is that what oh, you're yeah. referring oh. to? I, well, I was, that was, I was yeah. I, I okay. So I'm at a trade show, right? Not not a cigar fashion trade show. And for some reason I'm I'm meeting with uh some of the people from psycho bunny and we're talking about like accessories with them. Right. And for some reason, I have no idea why it came out of my mouth. Like I, I just said, reach around. It, it was part of the conversation, <laughs> but my mind is such a defiled stadium of disenchantment. And there were things going on and it was like a professional meeting. Like it wasn't like a, Matt Booth's booth at the PCA where it's like a fucking free for all. It was like a <laughs> actually like a, a place of, of authentic, uh, you know, mature commerce, if there is such a thing. <laughs> and I said that and, I, and and the girl just immediately starts dying. And I said, oh, my God, I just said re I turned and there's an older gentleman that I was working <laughs> with is a sales guy out of New York. I said, Phil, I just fucking said reach around our meeting. He's like. Matt, I got to tell you, it was amazing. It was like, it's like, it's just the whole thing. He's like, I, I don't even know what to say. The whole, this whole moment is amazing right now. So anyways, if we wanted to reach around mm -hmm. back in time to travel, 
back in the time. What maturing? I mean, let's not be so. Uh, let's not be so f bold as to use the word maturing, but we'll say <laughs> developing. Uh, my palate really just consisted of shoving as many cigars into my face and igniting them as humanly possible. But it, it's something that occurs over time. It's time plus focus, right? Because you can yeah. smoke casually to enjoy, and it, and it really depends on your personal aptitude, your 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 whole mouth's disposition to the act of smoking. I mean, I I know I know consistent cigar enthusiasts, consistent smokers that have been cigar enthusiasts for years, and and I've had multiple people in that, you know, with that. Uh, you know, concoction of time versus smoking. I've had multiple people tell me, they said, Matt, I don't know. It just tastes like smoke. Yeah. So if, if you if already, if you're not predisposed in some fashion to being a little tasty mofo, and then on top of that, have some guidance or apply a massive level of focus to your smoke. I mean, honestly, man, I think on the casual tip, a little focus is great, but I mean, you could really burn yourself out too. You know, like, uh, I mean, oh my God, what the fuck am I supposed to be taking? It's like, just stick it in your mouth and shut the fuck up and enjoy yeah. the cigar. Yeah. Let us let us make sure that we do the most important thing first is to enjoy it. Yeah. And then if you know anybody in the business, then you can go about talking your little bullshit about them in the, in the corner of the cigar shop. Yeah. But enjoy well, the cigar first. Yeah. And like you said earlier, it's also toes. it's the the time Sorry. that and the people that you're with that Yeah. You know, that focus on that. Yeah, man. It's it, I mean, look, I've said it before, but there's no, to me, there's absolutely zero mystery why tobacco uh, was put into the peace pipe. You know why that uh, an evolution of that significance would incorporate the smoking of tobacco as a group, as a crew to connect and to speak and understand and and come together. There's no yeah. secret to me. You know? Yeah. So who have been over the, and it could be early in when you were in the cigar game and even up until now, who have been some of the people that you would call a mentor or a guide through, through, you know, working on uh, your blends and things like that? Morris Day from the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, 100%. Yes. yes. Uh, I would say first and foremost. Um, secondly, I'm highly disappointed. I never got to meet Rams in person. Uh, mm. or Prince. Yeah. But I put uh, Rick over Prince. Not in, what? Not in talent, but just in okay. sheer game. Oh. In, yeah. yeah, in game. Yeah. yeah. I, yep, yeah. I'll give you that. I mean, a, a similar amount of, of uh, you know, saffron type clothing articles and leather. Uh, you know, there are a lot of... Sa Rick James and Prince comparison off. How about that? Oh, I mean, what's similar and the similarities and the differences, that would be a good one because, that you know, if be. you, because obviously vastly different, but many there's, there's crossover. Oh, there's a lot of crossover. You know what Prince I had a, had a great movie. Yeah, he did. Fucking a he did. You know, I always was a fan of give it to me by Rick James. Mary Jane, obviously, forever. The first song uh, I heard from him, and and uh, uh, captivated me, shall we say? But uh, "Give It to Me" uh, was really at the top of my list, and forever will be, because he's just saying, "Look, I'm coming home late. I smell like alcohol and other women, and I don't <laughs> hear any mess about it. Just give it to me." Yeah. Give it to me now. I don't care. Now. This is nonsense. Whatever <laughs> you're saying to me, I want nothing to do with it. Give it to me. And it's nice. I think that's nice. I think it's actually very romantic. Because well, in every relationship, you're going to have challenges like that, man. And you just got to... Nothing else, it's honest. It's, it's, it's just flat out honest. I, I got to get... We got to get back to making love. Like, well, you stop gotta be, this bitching. 
at me. It, you gotta, you gotta close. You gotta, you gotta be a closer. And sometimes in order to close, you just have to come right out and ask for the sale. It's the assumed close. It's like, we're, yeah. we fuck it. <laughs> well, and also That's what I and, tell people when I visit their stores. Oh yeah. I mean, essentially. Yeah. 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 I ain't putting up with that. Let, let's consummate. Yeah. Let's have transactional coitus. Now. <laughs> I have flown <laughs> here. And I am erect. <laughs> so I have to, uh, going back to Oh my to God, print. am I supposed to be talking about something else? No, no. We're, no. Coitus is coitus perfectly is perfect. on the, brand right now. Well, and it's, it, it, I have to say this, that going back to the Prince discussion is, and I've had this discussion with, uh, with a number of friends over the years, and one in particular um, is our mutual friend, uh, the wonderful William Cooper from Cigar Coop is that I truly believe that the song Purple Rain is without a doubt the greatest pop ballad ever written and recorded ever in the history of modern American music. I can dig, I can get behind that. I can get, I mean, that. it's, it's a song that I believe is, how about that ballad? I, I think it's about I ballad. think it's perfect. I think it's it's the perfect pop ballad. Well, in the moment that you I realized you're, you're that, not wrong. Huh? No, the moment I the moment I realized that was uh somebody shared a picture of this wall of speakers with a little tagline that said if the engineer gave you the plug and said you can play one song, what one song would you play? Mm -hmm. For me, Purple Rain. Purple Rain. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. That is a great that's question. Strong. Yeah, if you get that huge sound, you get that huge stage system all set up, and whether you play, if you play keys, you've got the perfect keyboard. If you play guitar, you've got the perfect rig set up, ready to go. What one song are you going to play? Wow, that's a great question. For, for me, it would absolutely, without a doubt, be Purple Rain. No question. I can dig it. Mm -hmm. I can. I feel that. I have to put this comment on screen. I do, uh, yeah. I don't even know what it means, but I love it. We love you, Ryan. We are all very concerned. We are. We are. Yeah. The unit that is broke. Mm -hmm. And but the pank is stank. We know. <laughs> it's stank. We know. Yep. Hashtag free Ronnie. Free Ronnie's <laughs> eggplant. <laughs> Oh, oh, all right. So I have to ask this. So I'm a firm believer that good hobbies keep us from bad habits. So okay. what do you, what do you like to do when you're not working on room 101 projects? Sleep. <laughs> that is a good hobby. Do you oh got that God, down? It's delightful. I, I, <laughs> I'm trying to improve my technique every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, honestly, man, um, now, uh, just spending time with my family, man, mm -hmm. spending time with my son, soaking up every moment of it, because I know that it's almost like watching sand through the hourglass every day. He gets just a little bit bigger and it's just a little bit closer to that time that he's not going to be five anymore, you know? Yep. And so, uh, this is my first go around. And so I'm just absorbing as much as humanly possible. And how fun is that? Oh, it's so great. Oh, my it's gosh. The fucking best thing on earth, man. It's the yeah. best. It really, really is. And it is, it is just, it is just a blink, too. It yeah. really is. It's like, what, what just, I mean, I look at my kids and I'm like, what, what happened? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. did we get here? I mean, it's like, and, and then you go back and look at old photographs and things like that. Um, and, and honestly, that not to, not to trivialize important family stuff like this with cigars, but, so there are some times that you can smoke, you know, this cigar that's been on the market forever. That's been a personal favorite for many years. And those aromas and things sometimes can trigger memories that take you back of to a time. Of play. Yeah. It's, 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 it's kind of magical in a way. I mean, the first time that I realized that time travel was actually real was in a cigar factory, you know, 
I was in the loft area where we did our blending in the, in the old Camacho factory uh, in the center of Don Lee. And I remember putting my head in a bin of tobacco while we were trying to select components for an attempt at another blend. And I inhaled in this one bin and I was immediately uh, transported to a, a small stable uh, where my mom uh, once upon a time kept a horse. It's not code for anything. You know, she actually had a, a, a steed and, and, you know, it was the one luxury that she afforded herself in her, her entire life was, was having a horse. And, and, uh, you know, I was literally in the stable with him, feeding him a carrot like mm. that. And yeah. I was what, six, maybe six, maybe yeah. six when that was taking place. And, and I immediately said, we need to use this. And it actually worked by the way. And I've had that occur since. And every time that happens, I immediately demand that that tobacco is used and every time it works. So, yeah. you know, I don't know what you can say about that. Uh, that but, same uh, memory or a different memory? No, no, the same, same memory. Oh, that's crazy. It's a specific smell. Yeah. That memory and the tobacco is a winner. Hmm. Or at least it's a component of a, a winning or moderately winning or yeah. at decent attempt at a cigar. Yeah. Well, we're not sure who Babushka is, but they say hello. Oh, it's my little porcelain bellied uh, Babushka from Florida. Nice. Yeah. And Tom and wants to know Mike. Shadow Soldier Cutters one day? Question mark. My daddy's personal business, all right, Tom. <laughs> You'll be made aware of such things when such things are meant to be aware of, all right? So, Matt, are you big on collabs? I am huge on collabs. I got to be honest with you. I and and I still might fuck around and do it because I'm I'm fucking tired, bro. But I I might my theory when relaunching the cigar component of our business in 2017, I thought hard and long, don't get excited about only collaborating with people. Too late. Yeah. <laughs> oh, only. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Like four times a year dropping a soup, actual collaborative product. I mean, I, I was friends with pretty much everybody that was worth a shit in the business in terms of brand owners. Right. So it was like, there was no shortage of equity amongst my peers and friends in the business. And, uh, you know, I thought, why not? Mm -hmm. And I still yeah. might do it. Do you have any, uh, do you have anything that you can tease us with? <laughs> Like, I know you have a lot of things to tease us with, but uh, specifically talking uh, in the cigar game. The rebirth of Namakubi. Oh. <laughs> it, it, so, um, to quote George Costanza, it moved. <laughs> it totally There moved. you go. It, it there moved. There you go. Yeah. You know, I... Uh, in the cigar business, the pleasure of men has become a specialty. And the ability, uh, the ability to deliver things that please them in ways that they never thought possible uh, has become a daily practice here at Room 101. The, you know, in effect, I mean, I, I, this is a brand that's been completely built on men love. I mean, I, it's this chief currency. Yeah. Really? I mean, do you disagree? No, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no, we are reading from the same book. Uh, <laughs> actually, this is, there's a cool viewer question. Uh, Josh wants to know when you left the cigar industry, uh, did you know that you would make a return or was that uh, uh, something that you uh, kind of decided later? If you, if you thought for a while, no, I'm done with cigars as a, as a business part of room one, room one one mm -hmm. uh, but then you decided later to get back into it or was it always a desire to, to jump back into cigars? 
I was at the factory about three or four days after the turn of the new year, the next year. Okay. Working. Yeah. It was never so my were, intention to leave. You were in. Yeah. Yeah. It was never yeah. my intention to leave. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I have to, I have to find out. So we've like, I, I mean, said, shit we, gets fucking, you know, you, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, it can wear on you from time to time. But yeah. We are, it's a heart driven business, man. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, I mean, things come along in just about any kind of business and even in other parts of, of room one one with, uh, you know, design jewelry, things like that. It's, there have to be days when, when, you know, things just, you know, sometimes shit just goes South uh, for whatever reason. And you just have to, you have to, you know, get back in there and, and, and keep, keep grinding so mm -hmm. I, I isn't that true do you, do you think with just about any kind of venture you're going to get into you're going to have to be able to put up with it look whoever said if you do what you love to make a living you'll never work a day in your life is a fucking <laughs> asshole <laughs> asshole <laughs> if you do yeah. what you love to make a living and you elect to attempt to monetize something that you love you should hope to continue to love what it is that you do. Amen. That, that is, well said. is real. That Absolutely. is real. Yeah. Well, you do what you love. Yeah. You don't do what you love to make a living then. You know, I mean, if someone says that so flippantly, it's their, their, you know, their pop in theory, you know, they work a day job and dream of like doing their passion project for a living, not understanding that their dream quickly becomes a nightmare. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they think it's going to be like Bob Ross painting happy little trees all fucking day. <laughs> that guy was a fucking psychopath. <laughs> so, probably, but it's, to, but it's totally possible. And, you know, in many ways, you know, um, the the component where we're monetizing our passion you know for example for me i continue to operate in the bespoke jewelry sector because quite frankly i i fund the vice of design i mean there are few things that i i love making shit i love creating new cigar blends i love creating new cigar series and developing packaging and creating cohesive groups of products that, uh, you know, offer this visual, uh, this well-rounded visual presence and makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I literally, okay. I know you've seen it. I know, you know what I'm about to talk about. We're going to have to find a, 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 you know, um, uh, an example but there's a font right i've i've forever been like a, an animal when it comes to people's advertising people people's business signs signage and there's a font that is so fucking gross so disgusting so depraved and people use it so freely for some reason because in most people's world, if a product looks like it was attacked by clip art, it's like half fucking cool, right? So <laughs> it's kind of like tattoo -y, uh, like old English-y, but like tattered. And I've seen it on tanning salons, board games. And now people send me pictures of it when they discover this disgusting fucking font in the wild. I, it was on a movie theater somewhere, a strip mall. And it's called like Blood Soaked Cowboy or some shit like that. Like Hep C Cowboy. I don't know what the fuck it's called, but it's something about blood and cowboy. I think it's Hep C Cowboy. Anyway, my point is you look this up. This this is the villain. This is the super villain. My arch nemesis is this font. Okay. And this font disgusts me to a point of violence and piercing brilliant white light, like blinding rage, this font, hepatitis cowboy. You find it. 
I've put actually it on the screen. I'll burn my fucking house down. Up after we speak. I'll do it right now. But this is my point: is that I love creating, and in any field where actual creativity is necessary to be leveraged to build a thing, a, a concept, uh, you know, whether it's audible art, visual art, three-dimensional art, product art, you know, the trade dress of, of some series of products. Um, oh, you son of a, is no, this, but is that's pretty, no, but that's pretty fucking bad. That's like a, the, <laughs> the abortion that affliction wishes they had. What is that's horrible too. Yes, yeah, Fuck there's that so there's so song. many bad there's so many bad ones out there. It's just sad. But this is the thing is because okay, lettering should be hand run at all times. There is a perfect imperfection in the touch of the human hand. Okay, all of my lettering it's either supremely minimalist and very clean and devoid of any you know it's it's in and when that type of font structure is yes that is meant to be kind of euthanized of yeah. of that perfect imperfection and it's just meant to be very droid like and yeah, then yeah. there's the fanciful and the whimsical uh, touch of human hand which is applied to a great deal of our artwork i mean all of my graphics are are drawn by hand none of them are computer illustrations you know um, and is that all your work do you have a team of artists as well I have I have a couple people that I lean on. I'm a three dimensional artist. I'm not a two dimensional artist, okay. at least at the level that I honestly should be. And so a lot of my art, like all of our original graphics that my friend Chewy drew for me, were all based on my rings. I, I yeah. gave him three dimensional uh, sculptural work, and and I communicated to him that it needed to be done in some level of two D positive negative um, illustration. So all of that stuff, even the foo, uh, the cherry blossom, all that stuff is drawn by him. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, have you done any like real mm -hmm. crossover between fashion and cigars? No. No. Does one no. ever inspire the other? Of course. There's all forms of molestation going on behind the scenes creatively in my group of work at any given time and i will say that there is cohesion in our brand even across category because sure. you know uh i i remember being at the nordstrom uh on michigan avenue uh conducting a trunk show for our brand and a gentleman came up and said i smoke a cigar with that picture on because we had some of our foo t-shirts there mm. And he said, I smoke a cigar with that, that picture on it. And I said, well, yeah, that's my brand. <laughs> we got to <laughs> talking about things, you know, um, I think, you know, my, you know, my ultimate vision for our brand was always to become, you know, the modern day version of what Dunhill was in 1950, you know, oh, yeah. um, the ultimate multi, multi category, uh, multi classification luxury lifestyle collection except yeah. theirs was very stoic and very British and ours would be very Los Angeles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And very, and very Los Angeles. And you know, two that by 2020, you know? Yeah. Well, I got to say too, just talking about this cigar that I, I picked these, these uh, room 101 11th anniversary cigars up at uh, mm -hmm. big apple cigar and pipe here in, in uh, beautiful forest Lake, Minnesota a couple days ago. And, Going back to what we were talking about earlier with, uh, what was it? Uh, um, uh, Donkey Show. Reach Around. <laughs> reach, uh, reach Around. Yeah. It, it was uh, Reach Around. It, it was, was Reach Around. around. Uh, this, this cigar is, is uh, a term that Garrett likes to use frequently is raping my face. Yes. <clears throat> but oh, it's actually yeah. but It's actually consensual. Oh, Pound. Pound Town. Pound Town. Thank you, Garrett. Yeah. It's taking your palate down to Pound Town. It, it is taking it to Pound Town. <clears throat> you but can't use, is. I mean, we use mouth hole frequently on all of our promotion, and, and we started getting flagged for uh, sexually aggressive uh, content. So now we've changed it to face hole. We'll see how long that lasts. 
face hole works. I, 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 mouth I like hole is more provocative. I like mouth hole too. When we've got a, yeah. a friend that does a uh, barbecue sauce that's branded mouth hole. Oh yeah, I His, wonder if he gets shit for that. Shout too. out, shout out to Ray. He's uh, he's got a barbecue business uh, in the Sarasota, Florida area. Oh. And, his sauces. I'm, I'm I, down I, for mouth hole. I haven't been oh. able to actually have his barbecue, although I might be able to change that in these next couple of weeks. But yep. but the sauces they make are lights out. Understood. Yep. So taking your palate down to Pound Town. Yeah. <laughs> no, for real, Matt. This. So could you tell us about this 11th anniversary and what that project meant for you and the process? What's brown? <laughs> was that was uh, all right? Mid-brown. Mid uh, you know, many people have very dark, uh, dark chocolate browns. This, I wanted it to be mid-brown. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not medium. Mid. Different. Mid. Darker, yeah. but not midnight brown. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. It's like the people who and say I, medieval versus medieval. Me medieval? Yeah. Wow. He went there, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. I got you. I dig it. So first and foremost, the idea with this blend was that my anniversary project must be rock star in every way, shape, and form every year. Because every year I will release a new blend. However, it also must be a very affordable luxury. And as long as I can continue to build the cigars that I want to um, and sell them for $10 a piece, that's what I'm going to do for our anniversary series. Um, and that's retail, obviously. Um, I would be ecstatic if I could sell them for $10 wholesale. I would actually like make a, a living doing this. <laughs> so, it's all working out. Yeah. How about that livelihood? How about that? Oh, so, uh, so, uh, but I also, first and foremost, going into the process, I said, I'm going to deny every one of these little fuckers the understanding of, and I'm sorry, everyone out there, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to let anyone fucking know what factory we make this at and why. Because brand bias, in my opinion, is one of the greatest sensory experience effectors or impacts, greatest impact to sensory experience when coming when smoking cigars out of anything. Yeah. And if people were being fucking honest with themselves, instead of saying that it smells like elderberries and and all you know. And, and granulated baseball diamonds and all of the things that they're, you know, their brand bias has infected their mind before they've even tried the cigar. And tethered to that, it's twofold, is also factory bias. Yeah. Because there are cigars that you could be given that are from a factory that you believe. <laughs> I, I've had people tell me, well, you know, we just don't really care for, you know, your farce collection. Um because we don't like Dominican cigars. Those cigars are manufactured in the Dominican Republic. One of them has zero Dominican components. The other has such a minimal amount of Dominican tobacco in it, it's non-existent. Yeah. They're not even close to being Dominican cigars. So their bias against other what they perceive to be other Dominican cigars had turned them off uh, to our product before they could even try it. And then when they tried it, they didn't like it because they already told themselves they didn't like it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. So, so I was going to debit one, one of the two major, uh, sensory, uh, experience effectoids, contaminoids, cannabinoids. No, that's, some, that's something. That's different. <laughs> that's, other a, than else. that's a different different thing. That's a also by combustion you may ingest. Now, <laughs> uh, so so I said fuck that. No one's gonna know the factory. They're gonna they're either gonna hate it or love it because it's room one hundred and one, and then they're gonna either hate or love the cigar, right? 
Yeah. And, and so that was, I think one of the main, I, I don't even, I don't really, I actually, as, as silly as this sounds and, and as simple as it is, I really don't know of anyone else that's done that. Now I'm not saying yeah. they haven't, I'm not at all saying that they haven't because I'm, I'm just simply <laughs> saying I'm on a, it's not something that's common because I think a lot of people validate their products by leaning on the factory that they work with, with whom they work. Yeah. And not that they need to, I think that they try to reinforce, uh, and further validate their products by uh, factory clout. Yeah. It's, obviously it makes sense to do that. Yeah. Well, I can only think of one other, yeah, I got one, one other brand that doesn't really disclose their factory relationship, but it's for, a, I'm going to say that I, I like your reasoning behind it because mm -hmm. there's there's a purpose behind your reasoning for not disclosing it. It's the the other brand that I'm thinking of, and I'm not going to name them. It's it's more political, politically driven, mm -hmm. or you know that. But yours yours is smoking experience driven. Oh yeah, and man. And quite that. frankly, more people probably would have liked the cigar if I outed the factory because it's a very reputable factory that makes phenomenal product but I refused this information. They actually wouldn't even put it in uh, Cigar Insider. Uh, the guys from CA called me and wanted to rate it in Cigar Insider. And when they asked me in the factory, I said, I'm not disclosing it. And they said, well, we can't print. I said, well, that's cool. I yeah. guess you get the next one then. You know? Yeah. So hmm. uh, I am uh, not to care about things sometimes, but was that a uh, decision? You know, it just kind of came about. It kind of came about in the development process, right? And I don't know why I was so struck by it. I was, you know, I had, I, it was something that was kind of like lingering with me and is one of those things that from time to time can be a little frustrating, right? As we do what we love to make a living. So, you know, I just said, fuck it. I'm just gonna, I, you know, I'm going to fuck around and I'm going to do this. This is how I'm going to do it my way. And I'm going to do it this way. And that's how it's going to be done. And that's yeah. it. I respect the hell out of it. Absolutely. Um, I actually, and seemingly I, I, it did well. I have more, we have more questions, but I want to get to the thing, the thing before we get to the more questions. Okay. Do the we do the thing? Let's do the, the thing. thing. Let's do the thing. All right. How about that thing? <laughs> It is time thing? for this week's Numero de los Muertos. And guys, as always, you know, Numero de los Muertos is brought to us by our friends at Smoke In Cigars. So please look up smokein.com and find them for all your most beloved cigar give needs. Abe give the love. Give Honest Abe some love because he is so lovable mm -hmm. be delicious <laughs> so juicy sexual chocolate oh my god i dream of big delicious i dream of big delicious so succulent <laughs> so pleasant <laughs> oh i love i love when you get talking about abe because i i've seen it on other shows that you've been on when when you just start waxing poetic about uh, about abe debabna it's it's i named it's, him big delicious you know yes, this yes. this is i've met many people in this business by the way i not that i'm a credit whore but for this name i will take credit and uh and deservedly so he wears it with pride he's he's, he's absolutely one of my favorite people in this business one of the better friends i've made uh in this he's, industry. he's a good one he's a fantastic guy and we he's love not to give a fuck Yes, but he does. Yeah. But he will always shoot you straight, and I always yep. tend to get along with people like that. Um, Absolutely, just a little bit better. Yeah. All right. So, numero you de say your fucking words. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Here, here are my words. Um. So this <laughs> this week, the number is twenty eight a year in the U.S. The uh, the first case documented comes from 1104 A.D. Whoa! Um, and uh, it took the lives of 
thousands, um, probably tens of thousands. And uh, but over the last twenty years, the twenty-year average is twenty-eight a year in the U.S. Oh wow! All so right. you and guys do what sh- type of shit kills people every time on your show? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love this. Yeah, mm-hmm. this and this is this is Abe's favorite segment on the show. That's why he chose to sponsor this segment. This is phenomenal. Yeah, he. Th- this is this is Garrett. It's brainchild, and it is it's for our viewers, the guests that are on the show. It is everybody's favorite segment. Oh, it's awesome! I'm all thinking of like, uh, you know, something like uh, choking on like a large sea cucumber or something. Like it, it like tries to work its way into your esophagus. And, are you thinking and... back to college? Um, <laughs> so no, it's not. Mm-mm. No, not that. <laughs> Fuck. What kind of college did you go to? Uh, so we've got some guesses. College of good times. <laughs> we've got leprosy. It is not leprosy. It is not the plague. Uh, it is not scurvy. Um, it is not a butt plug. <laughs> it is not lead poisoning. It is not Hansen's disease. Um Okay, so the first recorded was in 1104 AD. Yes, which uh, Caban said was his birthday. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, it's probably close. Scarlet Fever, another great guess. That uh, is not correct. Botulism. Botulism. That's another good one. No, sir. Smallpox. Uh, smallpox. Negative. Our all right eggplant friend. This is fucking interesting. Um so um, all right, so the the for the last twenty years the the US average has been twenty eight people per year mm-hmm. dying from I mean this. that's exquisitely uh limited. Oh it is yeah. Josh Jones. We gotta we gotta guess. Uh oh Nick- Oh shit. Gangrene. Gangrene. Yep. So the statistic for gangrene, there unfortunately I had to look this up. There are two types of gangrene. There is a wet gangrene and a dry gangrene. Oh. Um, Ooh. And I'm sure Chad could uh, break down m- m- in much more detail, but what I understand is the wet gangrene is uh a an infection that starts from a severe trauma uh crushing of uh flesh mm-hmm. and creates pus mm-hmm. um dry gangrene is much more treatable um and the statistics drop severely in 1775 with the invention of antiseptic so if you think of all the soldiers during the Civil War, actually 45% of the deaths of the Civil War were due to gangrene. Yeah. Um, mm. That's fucked. Yeah. Man. But it still takes 20, 28 lives a year. Gangrene. Wow. It's it got to be a horrible ass way to go, man. Oh, dude. Oh, my gosh. Just fucking blow my brains out. Yeah. Oh. Fuck that. Yep. Well, and all I day. think... I, th- I think just based on a company that I worked at for um, for many years that made medical devices, I think that some of those came from, uh, some of those can sometimes come from complications due to um, uh, diabetes where uh, certain, certain limbs uh, circulation mm-hmm. fails in, in certain extremities and mm-hmm. Uh, if not treated promptly, results in gangrene, uh, and sometimes can result in amputation and or or, or ultimately death if not treated. Um, so I would like to correct my statement, uh, which Bear brings up. It is not forty five percent of all deaths. It was forty five percent of people who contracted gangrene 
died from it in the Civil War. Okay. Yeah. I, I did misspoke that. Miss Miss you misspoke that. I misspoke it. <laughs> you misspoke did your word yep. w- words is is is. So a, but a 45% death rate uh is pretty significant. It's yeah. not good. It's, it's not, not a good look. It's not a good uh, yeah. like if I'm rolling the die on that, 45 is not Yeah, you're like mm. Mm, heads probably, or tails. Yeah. Um I like to not. Well, I'm I will say this. Um Wet gangrene, new band name, I call it. Oh, cigar. <laughs> oh, a cigar, Matt, a cigar name, wet gangrene. Yep, Matt, I'm just spitballing here. Don't worry. There are many names on the chalkboard of destruction <laughs> at this point. Yep. I'll put it up there. All put, right. Put it on put the it board. Yep. Put it on the board. I mean, I was like you know, quietly over here on my side of the screen. You know, when you were talking about the pus, I was fantasizing about like possibly the opportunity to kind of milk it out of and an, a full mm. limb, like mm. an extremity. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a popper. You know what I mean? Yep. hundred percent. My, yeah. my wife is too. I am too. My wife oh. is too. And it just, uh, I would literally, I would literally camp out in emergency room. If they would <laughs> let me, if they would let me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, you watch, like I mean, I'll wear Pimple gloves popper? and shit. I don't want Mercer or anything else, but huh? Have you seen Dr. Pimple Popper? Oh, of course. Bro, come on. Oh, dude. Come on. She, that That's show like, is that, I it can't is. I can't watch that. It makes me sick to my stomach. My oh. wife loves that show. I can't stand watching it, it. You know, you know what it is, man? There's something about letting it out. Like it's oh. in there. Yes. And it must come out. It's satisfying. Just get it out. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I don't know what that is, man. I don't either. Be it a, a big lipoma that they've had for you know twenty five years, you know, and there are things that I don't like. There are styles of them that I'm not all at all, right? Yeah, but I have my I have my favorites, and I have the ones where I'm like, uh, you know, like that yeah. one's a little a bit much for me, you know. Like yeah. I, I like you can't get specific. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am. I yeah. have my little knacks. Yeah, my nickname. I'm with you. All right, so that was this week's Numero de los Muertos. Numero de los Muertos, brought to you by Smoke in Cigars. So, all right, uh, there's there's so many questions, but this was one that that I wrote down that I just think is a really fascinating question, and I, I, I even tried to think up an answer for it myself, but... Um, so if you, Matt, if you had to wear a T-shirt every day for an entire year, and obviously, you know, we have 20 of these t-shirts made, so you're not, uh, you know, wearing the same funky t-shirt day after day after day for an entire year. Mm -hmm. But if you had to wear a t-shirt every day that had one single word printed on the t-shirt, what would that one word be? Gorgonzola. (sighs) Just Gorgonzola, the word would be on that t-shirt. That is, that's fa- because yeah. Can you walk? Us yeah. Why? That why? Alert? Why Gorgonzola? You know, it came to me one time when creating a password for something. Impulsively, right. almost. Yeah. And just going to suggest and, I, you and, and the word Gorgonzola has power. It does have power, and it would be a great conversation starter too. You know, you'd have people all day long asking, why does your shirt say Gorgonzola? I love Gorgonzola salad. <laughs> I love it. All right. I've what got would one. yours say? Oh, what would, oh, snail. Snail. Oh. Snail. Snail. Yeah, it's always, that's, that's always been, that's always been the word Whenever I've been tongue tied and just can't seem to think of what I'm supposed to say, I just, I just say snail. Mm. Ever since I was a kid, if 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 I just can't seem to think of the next word I'm supposed to say, if if I lose my train of thought, I just stop and say snail, and it seems to clear everything out. Mine, That's I cool. think, would be mine would be why. why, why, just why. I like to ask questions. I like to uh, not react to the things on the surface and uh, ask and go in deep. I like to go deep into things. Never just the tip. Pound town. Yep. Go deep. Fucking a. 
<laughs> Matt, what entertains you? You know, sometimes it, it not so much anymore, uh, but being on the road for the most part is absolute misery, right? And so, or it becomes, right? Now, I love meeting everybody. I love the conversations, all that stuff. But it, it's debilitating of soul uh, and other things, right? So uh, I would begin to toy with people uh, for my own personal entertainment. But it just so happened everybody liked the way that I was entertaining myself. And, uh, I mean, we fucked around and built a cigar brand by doing that, you know? Yeah. So I think uh, tinkering a bit with folks, I really like, uh, for whatever reason, I've always had a knack uh, for putting a picture together uh, for people that makes them want what I'm selling, right? And I enjoy that. I like I like putting it together. I love building the picture, um, and I and I love the you know to see the response from people, mm -hmm. because when they dig in, that's success. You know, you you hit those uh, little psychological triggers. You pulled all the right levers at the right time and made them unsheath their monetary units and afford them <laughs> to you in exchange for the merchandise yeah, or service goods or services really ever, you know, services. So services. what was Let the question? What do I like to do? No. What, what entertains you? Oh, what entertains me? That's it. That's about right. That's it. That's about right. <laughs> <laughs> that entertains me. What I just said, you know, uh, fulfill like a, a different uh, story. What's up? It's like a soft troll. It's not a true, true troll because you have a legitimate end game of, um, you know, of relationship or reaction or, but it's not as maniacal. Let's say as. Oh, your, it's it's always done with respect, man. I mean, unless yeah, someone sure. earns. Uh, the other, which they have to earn that. And some people do, you know, but rarely, rarely, you know, um, <laughs> but, you know, I think there's a bent appeal to somebody being out there just real as fuck. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cause this, I mean, it's, you know, it's like, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm a little tired. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm so nervous. I get so nervous talking to people. I never know what to say. Never oh, know what well, to say. Here's a, here's an interesting question. How about that conversation? How about that conversation? So if if uh, if they were going to rewrite the classic tale, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and make it Snow White and the Eight Dwarfs, what would the name of the eighth dwarf be? Rapey. <laughs> I think it would be rapey. I mean, it wouldn't be so PC, but that's the first thing that came to mind. You know, because like E words, you know? Yeah. Oh. He drives a van. For sure he does. He drives a, a white van with the bubble window on the back corner. Yep. You know it. <laughs> you know so it. Like, you like puppies? You like space movies? <laughs> <laughs> I mean movies about space. You know what I mean. <laughs> Your skin Step looks inside. a little dry. I yeah. got some lotion, man. You ever seen a Turkish prison? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, did that sufficiently answer your question? Yes, absolutely. Beyond, you got to do the sound by that one. You got to get me the sound by that. You know, like the little thing. So dun, can, dun, dun. The ra the rapey soundbite. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think so. So uh, there is is there is there something that you have an emotional attachment to that's uh, that that many other people would consider silly? 
Oh, we're, we're exploring. Mm. I love that lamp behind you, by the way. I haven't been able to see that lamp. That is, I think oh, it's yeah. a lamp. It's not, it's not plugged in, but this is the, you know, the power Beautiful. switch there. Oh, I love it. That's fantastic. So, so this is bubble gum. Uh, she's been with me <laughs> since my first apartment on Melrose. Uh, she is made by a gentleman named Spencer. Uh, his company is called Booty Babe Art. That is I've been spectacular. A, I've been a fan since before it was cool, as with most <laughs> things in my life, by the way. <laughs> Fuck you, J-Lo. <laughs> Fucked everything up for the rest of us. <laughs> oh, it's popular now. It's <laughs> All right, so that's bubblegum right there. I have an emotion. <laughs> So when did bubble gum come into the picture? Well, she came. I okay. So when I had nothing, bubble gum was like a seventy-five dollar spend. Okay, this was a, a tremendous sum of money for me at the time. Yeah. But I was so enamored with bubble gum that I had to buy her, and uh, uh, I got her probably in two thousand something like that. Right after I got out of the Marines, I was in East Hollywood living in a little shitbox apartment. Probably should be a storage unit. Uh, Melrose and El Centro. And Bubblegum came to stay with me. And through moving and all that, she's very, you can see, no breakage. Right? Yeah. What is she made out of? Uh, is it like a porcelain? Some, some, sort, of, some sort of resin. Okay. Mm. Yeah. She is so Booty Babe Art, man. Peep it out. He's always got are custom booty babes, all kinds of shit. I, I haven't been on there forever. What's up? Are they still doing the thing? Are I they still around? I believe they are. I haven't looked at some time, but I believe they, if, I mean, I believe what the man is doing to be God's work. So he should still be doing it. <laughs> no, all right. Can't. If if you could choose to hear the you thought. Know what I'm saying. Uh, we oh, do. Yeah. We absolutely do. If you could choose to hear the thoughts of one living person for 10 minutes, who would it be and why? I was, my impulse was to say, again, more stay from the time. However, oh, I believe he I thought passed. about that. I believe he passed. No. Uh, I'll look it up, but I believe he's no, no longer. No. He cannot. He can't be, man. Look it up, you son of a bitch. What he is, is he true? still around. No. He is still with us. My, apo <laughs> my apologies. That's right. My apologies That's right. to Morris Day. My and he's man. still singing. Fucking right, Morris Day. Sixty-three you know, years old. I got to tell you, one of my greatest regrets, and I don't, I don't regret much, but one of the regrets that I have. Okay. I was in Detroit for the first time, mind you, which I love this city, right? I fell fully in love with Detroit and have been a fan and a champion for the city's rebirth ever since I met Detroit, right? Um, but I went to the Motown Museum because that's what the fuck you should do if you go to Detroit for the first time. Now, yeah. now a key note here is shortly prior to my arrival in Detroit, a one Michael Jackson died. And so I was at the Motown Museum in Detroit for the first time, where the lawn was taken over by a gigantic memorial, essentially, uh, people bringing things and leaving them. But there was a gentleman and his lady out in front, Lincoln with the rag top on it, the whole fucking shit, and the trunk was popped and he was selling Michael Jackson tribute t-shirts. And I did not buy, if that gentleman is listening, okay, there are two things I need from Detroit right now. I'm going to need this from Detroit and it's coming from a good place. You got to help your boy out. One, size XL, don't fuck around, but not like maybe L for the shirts he had. I'm, I don't want to. They were probably like the triple A type, the, you know, the box shirts, right? Yeah. I'm going to go L, okay? On the Michael Jackson trunk shirts, somebody you know who he is, okay? Help me out. I'll pay good money. Two is the fucking poster, the poster 
<clears throat> from the Eminem and Jay Z show that was at Tiger Stadium that mm. the fucking guys at the merch booth wouldn't sell me because they kept it for their own little dirty little <laughs> selves. Right? <laughs> you fucks. I would have paid you good money for that. So I want that poster and I want that shirt. Please help me. Thank you. All right. That's all. That's all I have. Sorry. No, is that okay? Ryan, I'm sorry. Did I fuck up your show? Not at all. <laughs> I guess we're nervous. That happened like an hour ago. No, so that was we're <laughs> that was a week ago. <laughs> God, all right. If if you were about to get into a fight, what would your soundtrack music be? Okay. I gotta be honest with you, man. I'm gonna go get Swifty from Rick and Morty. <laughs> wow, I love it. Or better yet, uh, head bent over, raised the posterior. <laughs> <laughs> I think I that's what it. it would be. I love it. I don't it. know if that would be weird enough, you know. But, but the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's, but it's, it's. I want that emotion. Yeah. I want that vibe. You know? I like the Bob's Burgers theme song. <laughs> I feel you. That is I'm good. A tremendous Rick and Morty fan, by the way. Oh, love it. Yep. All it's right. Intelligently bent humor at its finest. It really is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the best. yeah. So well written. It's a killer. So choose, choose one of the following. You could hit a home run as a starting pitcher. You could score a touchdown as a defensive lineman. You could score a hockey goal as the goalie or score a soccer goal as the goalie. So I noticed that this is a complete reference to athletics, which I do not. Follow. Okay. But what I will tell you is that I will elect to score a soccer goal as a goalie because I actually played soccer as a young kid. This was the last time I played sports. Yeah. Or in an organized fashion, other than handball with the hobbies, but that's different. Yeah. Yeah, that is different. Um, and, and, I mean, on the wall, not the, you know. If you, could bring, if you could bring back any fashion trend from the past, what would it be? God, why did jelly shoes pop into my mind? Oh, <laughs> my God. Wow. They just like infected my pink jelly shoes just immediately popped into my mind. There was no. Did you smell? Not that Aquanet? I want it, but I'm just answering you. I think you want me to answer impulsively. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This is like I'm a this is like parachute. What are those psychological tests? Just like word association. Just start, just start throwing words out there. Jelly shoes. Jelly that's shoes, the, though, that's came the real into answer. Yeah. Why, why do I suddenly smell like, Polo Cologne or Dracar Noir. I suddenly just hearing the word jelly shoes. Aquanet. No, uh, okay, Aquanet. You yeah, he's got it. Dracar Noir came to be slightly after that, I believe. Yeah, it was yeah, after it was that. Yeah, bit. jelly shoes were were early mid eighties, and Dracar I think was after after that. You need uh, some Jabo jeans. Jabo jeans. Z Cavaricci. And- huh? Z Cavaricci. That, high, that yeah. high end shit. <laughs> yeah, guest jean overalls, dog. The shorts with, with one oh. strap down. Oh yeah, one you strap know. down. Oh yeah, yep. You know. Yep. Roll the roll the cuffs at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do you remember hypercolor? Fucking hey, I do. <laughs> That's mine. I want hypercolor back. You um, know, man, I believe they attempted to resurrect for a hot minute hypercolor. Did they? Really? You got to look into that. I think that yeah. I think that there was a feeble attempt at, at that that never went anywhere. I think it'll see its day again. I do too, no doubt. Yeah, it'll see its day again. Science. Um, did you have a uh, when you were a, a child or a teenager? Did you have a celebrity crush? Was there a celebrity that you just couldn't get enough of? I mean, there had to have been, right? 
as a team, man, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Joey Lawrence. Whoa. Whoa. Blossom. <laughs> I actually don't know. Yeah. I actually don't know. No, that's all right. That's all right. Um, and if you could. I have one now uh, pink. That's oh, I, I love her. Pink. Dude, her voice, I, I think she is one of the most underrated. I love her. She has a soul. Um, when she came out with that song Misery with Steven Tyler, mm. I was sold on Pink. Um, Pink. Pink is extremely underrated and she's real. Like her, she, her yes. authenticity, her human authenticity <laughs> bleeds through her celebrity. And there and there are some folks that that occurs, right? You like what and for whatever reason that is, like I would venture to say that Vince Vaughn and Adam Sandler are the way they are. Like they're never off. Right? Yeah. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And they behave mm -hmm. the way they behave in the movies normally. Like when they go to gas station, they act that way. Um, and there are other <laughs> folks that like certain, but but then again, like Pink is just like her, her real self bleeds through um, and outshines her celebrity, I think. Yeah. Yep. Which is probably why I like that because I don't, I, I can't get down with the, the faux. I need the faux real. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, amen. Yeah. If you could add any person's face to Mount Rushmore, horse tape for the top. <laughs> <laughs> the third time he comes up on this show. Good fucking show. Fellas, how about that? We should shit? get Morris Day on. I have. We should uh, get ever, Morris Day on. Ever since the first time you said his name early in the show, I have had Jungle Love playing on a loop in my head. It's so fantastic. It's infectious. Oh my god! You're, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I know what I'm listening to tonight. Um, and I was I was fortunate, so uh, not to. I mean, it's not name dropping because I was just a you know a spectator in in the concert, but. Uh, after uh, after Prince passed away, they had a enormous tribute concert at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul, and I was I I got to cross a few things off my bucket list, and one was to see Stevie Wonder perform live, mm. and the other was to see Morris Day and the Time perform live. Yo. And 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 so many other people were at this at this event. It was just spectacular. Shaka Khan and and I mean. The list goes on. Wow, it, was, it, it was one I can of imagine. the, and and, and uh, of course, again, Purple Rain. You know, when when you get that entire group of people up there performing, Purple Rain, it was goosebumps just thinking. It about was it. incredible, absolutely incredible. I believe that. So, um, oh, I think it's time for this week's notable smokable. So. As always, ladies and gentlemen, notable smokables on How About That Cigar is brought to us by Ace Prime Cigars. Ace Prime, notable cigars, notable passion, notable purpose. So, Matt, each week on Notable Smokables, we talk about a cigar that we've smoked recently that was interesting to us. It could be something brand new to the market. It could be something that's been a staple on humidor shelves for decades that we just smoked for the first time in many years. Um, so is there, is there something recently that you reached for from a humidor shelf that, that, uh, uh, that really caught your fancy? I smoked the Ciguar recently. Oh yeah. I had had one like once upon a time long ago in Cigarlandia. Yeah. And I revisited recently. I had one in my little, my little sweat box here at the house. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it was, it was lightful. Yeah. That's so, so Garrett, that's yeah. a, a very limited, uh, tatuaje release. Oh, and delicious little cigars, uh, little powerhouses. And yeah, it was yeah, potent. Very, it was very potent. nice. Cigar. Uh, what, what was yours this week? Garrett? Mine was the, uh, Daruma mm. from Steve Ooh. Saka. Oh, the Daruma is from Daruma. Matt Booth. Oh, the, the Don Derma? You Don Derma. Derma. You fix your mouth. Gosh, damn it. 
See, well, oh, I've got oh, fucking Matt fuck Booth on. He's, he was yeah. he, he was. Making... I had you on the brain. The Don <laughs> you should have just said it was Daruma. You should have <laughs> stuck with that. Oh my god! Sorry. Fucking hurt my feelings, man. I don't know if we can ever forgive this one. Uh, it's like I don't the, know. It's like the. I have MI forgiveness in my heart right tonight. Now. You guys have been very kind to me. It's cool, bro. So the Don cool. Derma. The Don Derma. Don Derma. From Steve Saka. I would yes. like to smoke this cigar. I have not smoked this cigar. I am going to call Ronnie Hishihashi and demand a cigar. Demand. I think I'll you demand are. It from him. Yes, you are in a position to make demands. I would hope so. At least someday, maybe someone actually complies with them. But yes. <laughs> well, and he might be able to hook you up with that t shirt and poster, too. That's true. Detroit. Mm. He might be your man. He's and he's so manic, man. If I tell him about this, it will program in the back of his mind that he has to get these items from me, and he probably will. Yeah, he probably will. Well, and and he, I'm really hoping we are able to see him in a couple of weeks at the uh, uh, the Ristafari event. I'm hoping, but we'll see. We'll see if things if are, things shake out. Are you familiar with uh, with uh, Risty and uh, the JSK brand? I have heard of such things, yes. And uh, have you ever thought of a collaboration? Oh, that's an interesting question. We've discussed it. Mm. Mm. Interesting. All right. Well, we will see what the universe we'll, does we'll, with that. We'll let that lie there. Yeah, we'll see what the universe does with that. Mm -hmm. um, so my notable smokable for the week was, uh, again, something I picked up while I was uh, in the humidor at Big Apple Cigar and Pipe, the Superfly oh, yeah. Connecticut uh, from Oscar Valladares, who makes wonderful cigars. And the original Superfly uh, I thought was wonderful, and I was excited to finally try the Connecticut version, and I thought it was another winner. Very good cigar from Oscar, and he's uh, he's a good guy and, and has been making good cigars for a uh, for a long time, so Superfly Connecticut, I would recommend absolutely. I'm gonna try it. I have not tried it yet. So that was this week's notable smokables, brought to you by Ace Prime, improving lives through fine cigars. Visit AcePrime.com to learn more. So, uh, just to give our viewers and listeners an idea of some stuff we have coming up. So, a reminder. Although we are always on Monday nights, next Monday night will be a rare exception. I'm on vacation with my family, so we will uh, take the week off next uh, next Monday night. Uh, and then the following week on the 15th of March, we're going to talk to Scott Pierce, who is the executive director of the Premium Cigar Association. Uh, that would be so episode 102. That would be <clears throat> episode one, 102. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right. uh-huh because mm. we may have something before that we may have we we may there may be something else you know even if it's 10 seconds like 101 bitch and then it's like <laughs> the thing cuts you know we'll work it out we'll make it happen we'll make it happen we'll make it happen and we do ha also have a special uh another special saturday episode coming up soon um with uh, Jeremiah Mirapfel from uh, the the mm. world-renowned Mirapfel uh, Cameroon tobacco family. Very cool. Uh, and and because he is in uh, coming to us from Europe, uh, the time difference being what it is, uh, the same that we did when we had Mr. Jose Blanco on the show. He is going to join us on a Saturday afternoon in United States time. So uh, it will be coming up later in the month of March. Uh, on how about that cigar live uh matt where is the best place where people can keep up on all the latest and greatest new info from room 101 brands all right listen to me it's very simple you must go on to al gore's internet and you must go on to the instagram okay <laughs> you go to room 101 brand okay Just listen damn your ears you listen to me you go to it's boofy baby my personal little smorgasbord of the destruction you go to room 101 cigars okay and by the way when you go to fucking room 101 cigars 
feast your eyes on the creative copy, okay? All right, just, just absorb the words. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not your standard fare of marketing vernacular. <laughs> and then Room 101 Gin for the drinkable. Yes. Room 101 Shadow Army for those that are true of heart. And only those ready to line up for service and enlist. And then, you know, there are a bunch of other things. You'll discover every. You just need to plug into those things and you will discover all. Yes. Outlines. Beautiful. Well, I am so grateful we had you on the show tonight. What I had an absolute blast. I I, I look forward to episode one hundred and one, which it may last. It the the episode may last a duration of five seconds. It may last a duration of five minutes. It may be five hours, but we are going to have episode one hundred and one. I think we need to make this happen. Yeah. I think the, the universe cries out for it. It does. I concur. So, Matt, thank you so much, honestly, for, for spending time with us tonight and just talking about uh, everything under the sun, and, and we hope to talk again soon. Yeah, and making well, how love about to, that podcast? How making, about love that? What? What? making love to our ear vaginas. Oh. With your... Oh, that's a little uh, ear hole. All your words, please. Ear, ear hole. hole. Ear hole. Yeah, yeah. let's, let's ear do hole. ear hole. Yeah. Ear hole. Ear it's, hole. It's, it's more, uh, it's more subtle. It's more palatable for people who don't necessarily go in for the. I the, mean, the calling it a vagina is just like I mean, you know, leave something That's, to be discovered in your romantic yeah. interlude. Like what, what? You're right. There's nothing exactly. left. It's like we might as well move yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Leave mystery in. The, yeah, I get it. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I do. <laughs> so for for our viewers and listeners, as always, again. Guys, we thank you so much for spending time with us on this show, whether you were watching live, watching after the fact on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, for those of you listening on the audio podcast, we're grateful to you guys as well. While you listen to audio podcasts, uh, driving down the road or working out, whatever you do while you listen to your favorite audio podcast, thanks for making us one of those. Um, as always, if you guys have questions for Garrett or myself, you can email us directly on the website, howaboutthatcigar.com. Follow us on social media at HBT Cigar. And as always, until we see you guys next time, burn cigars, not bridges. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. See ya.